Hey guys, this is Mongoose Guns, and in this video, I want to do a quick breakdown of Glock versus Sig. Now, I think on the internet, there's a lot of comparisons between these two guns, but they always kind of lean one way or the other with some kind of bias. So I want to try to keep this as objective as possible and really just help you decide which one might be better suited for you. All right, so to kick things off, this is the Glock 17, and this is clear. The 17 is really the original Glock that started it all. Now, of course, this is the Gen 5 I have here, but not a whole lot has changed between all the Glock generations. And that's kind of why I've always thought of Glock as a company that really specializes in simplicity. I know their slogan is perfection, but the fact is these guns really don't come with a lot of the other bells and whistles that you see in other uh, handguns today. But Glock, they do do a few things that make their handguns very unique and two of those right off the bat are going to be that low bore axis and that really aggressive grip angle and for a lot of people that's going to be a hit or miss um, people who are looking for glocks they really love those aspects of the gun but to other people that can really make that shooting experience a lot more difficult one thing that lower bore axis does is really change the way that recoil is perceived. It doesn't necessarily mitigate the recoil, but it keeps it from, you know, it keeps that muzzle from flipping up and uh, redirects that energy kind of more back into your hand. And what that does is keep your sight picture a little more flat and aligned with the target. And the grip angle kind of helps with that too, because it forces your hand to be a little bit more cocked downward. And what that does is kind of brace your wrist to catch that recoil impact. And another thing that grip angle does is sort of, at least for some people, it kind of makes that pointability of the gun a little more intuitive. <clears throat> and the way I like to think about it, if you take your hand and kind of point just with your index finger, your palm kind of has this natural slant, as you might be able to see. And that sort of lines up with the slant that the Glock uh, typically has and for some people that just makes pointing the gun a lot more natural feeling uh, combined with a low bore axis being very close to your finger when you do point that gun it's exactly where you want to point it now again this is not the case for everybody but for a lot of people who like glocks <clears throat> that is one thing that they really like about the glock uh, I guess I want to get into some of the weaknesses of the Glock that I've noticed and I think a lot of other people notice. So the first thing worth mentioning right off the bat is the sights. A lot of people have issues with these sights because they're polymer. And in, in fact, I think Glock is the only company that still uses polymer sights, which I don't know why they don't change that. But honestly, though, in my opinion, when it comes to actually shooting Glocks and accuracy tests, I have no problem using these sights. So the magazines are, they are in, aligned on the interior with metal, but the exterior is a plastic coating. Uh, the frame is of course all, all plastic. The mag release is plastic. The trigger is plastic. The sights are plastic. Uh, the MOS cover is plastic. And even the guide rod is plastic. Uh, and speaking of the guide rod, this Glock actually, the uh, guide rod broke after about 1500 rounds and they sent me a new one for free and uh, tested that out and it works fine but you know something to to be a little bit aware of uh, a lot of people they claim the glocks are the most reliable handguns but i think you know a lot of the internet is just facts that are you know repeated because they're heard many times over so people assume they're true uh, the glock reliability i would question a little bit Honestly, if I were to have to trust my life to this gun, I would replace a lot of the components with metal. I would definitely get a metal guide rod to get metal sights because, you know, I wouldn't want anything breaking on me when I have to really depend on this thing to save my life. So, you know, if you're thinking about a gun for duty use or home defense or concealed carry, then consider that aspect of the reliability. Um, you know, definitely test your equipment, make sure things work. But that's just something I want to throw out, uh, to throw out there. I have heard of guide rods breaking in other Glocks. I know Honest Outlaw mentioned that in one video he did about Glocks, but it is rare. So, uh, you know, at the same time, there are Glocks out there that have thousands of rounds with not a single issue and, and you know, no upgrades done to the gun. So it's just going to be case by case. But 
at the end of the day, you know, use your own judgment. Uh, the fact of the matter is most of the co components here are plastic. So, um, you know, just uh, take that however you want. All right, so moving on to the SIG P320. This is, of course, the M17 model, which I did a video review on. Uh, but these 320s are relatively new in comparison to the Glock 17. So this came out, I think the 320s came out in about 2014. And at first they did have some issues with the drop safety, which I'll get into a little bit later to kind of explain that whole uh, problem. Uh, but basically to kind of go over the P320 in general, it's, it's basically a very modular gun. And as you probably know, this did win the military contract. And part of that is because of the modularity that this gun offers. So really the serialized component of the gun is that interior uh, fire control unit. And you can swap out the frame and the slide to really get almost a completely different gun with the same legal firearm. So that is a really nice option to have. Getting into the strengths of the P320, really the way I see it is that you get a lot more higher quality components with almost a cheaper price. I think the base model P320 is uh, about $500. I've seen them on sale for $450, which is cheaper than Glock coming in at about <clears throat> a little over $500. And then with that MOS cut, it's gonna be about $620 for the Glock. And you see here the sights <clears throat> are not only metal, but they're also uh, night sights here. You get a metal trigger, um, metal slider release. The magazines are a very nice kind of steel construction. So the, just the quality of this gun, you feel right away, is a lot better. Um, let's start with the trigger. The trigger is an extremely nice trigger. It's very light. There's not a lot of take up and you hit a, uh, I'm just gonna check that slide again. You hit a, a nice wall right there and when it breaks, there's not a lot of travel and it's a very, very crisp break. The reset is not as aggressive as the Glocks, but you definitely still feel it, you can hear it, and it's not super far. So when it comes to actually getting those uh, quick follow-up shots, it's, it's pretty easy to do that with this kind of trigger. And moving on to the frame itself, although this frame is polymer, it is a very high quality and thick polymer. You can definitely, if you ever get your hands on one of these, you can just feel the quality of it, especially compared to the Glock. The, the Glock just feels a lot more, I don't wanna say cheap, but just not as solid. It's a characteristic of SIG that I've always noticed. Even in the P365, it's a very high quality polymer. As opposed to the Glock, you do get a pretty pronounced beaver tail there. And you do get the 1913 Picatinny rail with uh, several slots here, giving you a few more options. Another thing I like about the P320s is that unless you're getting the base model, almost all 320s will come with the optics ready slide. And these slides are usually cut for a SIG optic to fit directly to the slide without any kind of adapter play, which is pretty nice. Now, in the case of the M17, this is a little bit different. This is cut for a loophole Delta Point Pro. And the way the sights are fixed to this gun is a little bit strange. So they actually screw in for the bottom right here over the optics plate. Uh, but on other P320s, the rear slide will have its own kind of uh, slide to fit into back here. And then the optics plate will be completely separate. So it is different for the M18 and M17, but for most 320s, it'll be more of a traditional kind of optic setup. And the last thing I wanna mention is that I think the finish on the SIGs holds up extremely well. So you can see the barrel and the uh, guide rod there and the slide. Um, you know, I've put about maybe 3000 rounds through this by now, and the finish really makes the gun look brand new, which is really nice. Uh, in comparison, one thing I forgot to mention with the Glock is that on the Gen 5s, there's sort of an issue with the finish they use. It really wears off quickly, which is not a big deal. It's mostly on the barrel and inside the slide, but um, it's just something I noticed, which is uh, a little bit different than the previous generations and with SIG. So ultimately it's gonna come down to your preference and which one you shoot best with. The way I like to think about the difference between Glock and SIG is SIG has more of an emphasis on quality whereas Glock has more of an emphasis on ergonomics. Now, that might be subjective. Uh, some people will probably argue the complete opposite. They'll say SIG is much better for ergonomics, but at least for me, that's why I bought both. This gun is very ergonomic and it's very pleasant to shoot, uh, but this one, I feel like I have a much more quality piece in my hand when I shoot it. 
Another thing that is worth thinking about is the different kinds of recoil impulses you get with both of these guns. This one feels much flatter, but the recoil is a little more violent in the sense that it just comes back right directly towards you. That's why some people describe Glocks as being snappy. I wouldn't really say snappy, I would say more like punchy. Uh, I feel like I'm getting punched you know, right into my hand, you know, when I shoot these guns. They're also pretty lightweight too, so you do feel a little more of that recoil. But again, because that bore axis is so low, it keeps that sight picture uh, pretty flat. So that's the way I kind of think about the Glock recoil. With the SIG recoil, it is pretty soft, but it's a little more rotational. So you see your sights kind of move up a little bit more, but you don't feel a lot of that recoil kind of getting blown back directly towards you. So that's pretty much how I would describe the recoil differences in a nutshell. Another thing to consider is the reliability and the safety. I think both of these sort of have their issues when it comes to safety. With the 320, there's the infamous drop safety issues, with which uh, some people will argue never really went away. I think, in my opinion, they are fixed, but you know, some people have reported different things. And with the 17, I think you just or the Glock 17, I mean, you just have cheaper components. That guide rod, it did break on me after about 1,500 rounds, but. You know, if you don't mind putting in a little extra money and upgrading that guide rod, then, uh, you know, or, or the sights or any other piece that you might be concerned about, then that might not be an issue for you. Last little point I want to make in case you're still on the fence, which one to go with or which is better for you. With Glock, if you are concerned about some of the problems I mentioned, uh, check out Shadow Systems because they pretty much make the Glock but fixed all the things I talked about. Now you are gonna pay a little bit more money for that. They do have their Combat Foundation series for about 700, I believe. And then if you get their Elite series, those go for a little more uh, close to $2,000. But the way I think about it is that even if you make one or two upgrades on like a regular Glock, you know, for example, if you just change the sights, that might cost you 50 bucks, then this already kind of goes up to about $700 anyway. So. Shadow Systems might be a good alternative if you are if you want a Glock, but you're a little bit hesitant. And same with SIG. If you are thinking about a P320, but you're still kind of on the fence, I would check out companies like FN, because I think they really combine the aspects of Glock and SIG, and you get the best of both worlds. So, you know, if you are on the fence, there are completely different options to look at that might be well suited for you. Um, you know, don't just take the word of other people telling you, oh, you got to get a SIG or a Glock because those are used by, you know, militaries and law enforcement. Um, I think in today's market, there are plenty of other options too that have uh, proven themselves in reliability and dependability and accuracy and all things like that. So, you know, these are just two really common choices and I wanted to talk about the differences and the pros and cons, but, uh, you know, in any case, uh, always do your research and figure out what's best for you before you buy all right, guys, let me know what you think. Let me know if you are a SIG fan, if you're a Glock fan, or if you think they both suck, or if you have them both like I do. Uh, I would love to hear what you guys have to say. All right, thanks for watching.